Hi guys, how's everyone doing? How was day one? It was fun, it was fun, right? Great, thanks a lot. I wanna say thanks to Matt for giving me the opportunity. It's great to be back home in London. And I think Matt and the whole Polymer team have just done a fantastic job with the summit for us and, and with the new release of uh, Polymer 2 and the like. And I kinda needed it. I kinda needed yesterday and I kinda needed the party because 2016's been, a, it's been an interesting year, should we say. And I, now and then I get a little bit frustrated. Uh, again, I grew up here, so I have certain frustrations about being here. And then, now I live in the US, and uh, <clears throat> there's a few frustrations right now in the US. Yeah. So, I kind of looking at maybe Canada, Australia, I, I don't know, I really, I really don't know. <laughs> yeah. But then, then I have to go to data, and I have to be like, take a breath, it's actually the best time in history to be a human. It's okay, the world is more peaceful, there's less poverty, it's gonna be okay, and I have to kind of calm myself down. And I sometimes feel a little bit of the same way with technology, where I dive in there and feel a little bit frustrated. There's just so much stuff going on, things are evolving so quickly, and I have to remember that you know, I may not have to learn every single tool that someone publishes to NPM or GitHub. It may be okay to just focus on actually delivering something, you know, for my users. And then I have to remember again after taking a breath that things are actually pretty amazing for the web right now. You know, I used to work for uh, Walmart where I started a, a mobile group over there, uh, Walmart Labs, uh, which is, also has Asda in the, in the UK. And this was about five years ago where I got to kind of get in there, kick out you know, mobile from the ground up. They had no native apps, no mobile website, and the business just wanted apps, apps, apps. Right? This is five years ago, it's a big push. And so we went out there and, and got things into the, into the app store, but we also built a brand new website that actually worked well on mobile, and I was able to see over time things kind of settle, because whenever something new is happening, everything is kind of up and to the right, and a couple of years in, I could kind of see that Okay, look at this, guys. 80% of revenue is still coming through the website. Hmm, maybe there's something to this web thing still. And so maybe we should kind of focus a lot of our attention on that. And I feel like we're getting to that across the entire community. We see a lot of the kind of macro picture on what's going on, but then we can actually look at our data and see how things are kind of balancing out. But as well as being you know, an important end of the tap experience, we also need to become really native on mobile. And that, to me, is what the progressive web apps thing has been about, is about actually delivering all of those capabilities. And that's been incredibly exciting over the last year. But I kind of feel like this at the moment. I feel like I'm regenerating from desktop apps mobile, uh, desktop apps web to mobile web. And I feel like, as a whole ecosystem, we're still going through this change, and we're not fully there yet. But it's important to note how far we've actually come. You know, when mobile finally took off, it was the pinch and zoom web. And it was actually a genius strategy of Steve Jobs and friends to do this because the web then instantly became the back catalog, right? If, if he didn't deliver this, remember at the time, everyone was working on WAP and these other you know, kind of weird things for mobile, then there wasn't the path to be able to get access to all of this content. But we've been able to go from that and move away. We don't want the web just to be the back catalog. We want it to be at the forefront. And we can now deliver these fantastic experiences like Chop and Polar and a lot of the things that the partners have been showing. And this is really kind of a sense of where we've been able to, to get to over the last few years. But we've got a major challenge. And we're at an interesting crossroads right now. And I think it's important to realize that there is still an existential threat going on here. And that's about building our mission for our users to deliver this fantastic experience, but to do it on this platform that is very different. On the web, you have the browser and the runtime that's obviously already on the device, and so you have to use that as much as possible, hence use the platform and the things that we've been hearing. But we've also got this whole slew of stuff that has to sit on top of it. We've got all of our frameworks and libraries, all of our app code, and then all of the data and things that we need how are we gonna get that onto the device and in a way that 
mobile can actually run this thing. And Alex Russell is going to tell us a lot about the actual constraints that are here. And it's really vital to realize the threat that we're in, because we need to deliver that in three seconds or we, we're dead. And so it's kind of important for us, the framework developers, you know, and the browsers to keep evolving this runtime to actually work really well uh, for mobile. How do we solve this? We have to do magic, right? Computer science tends to be a lot of illusion. You know, as you're interacting on your desktop computer, it looks like the computer's there trying to do some work for you, but we all know that it's really going through a whole slew of tasks in the background, and at the last minute, it's saying, oh, yeah, repaint that cursor, uh, just being there ready for the user. We need to work out a way to do that. And Monica and Steve talked about this yesterday, about being lazy and doing less. It's important that we really push hard using all of the tricks and smokes and mirrors that we can. Paul Lewis is going to be talking later. He's kind of our master magician. And he'll be here with his sidekick, the Safety Surma. And so you'll be able to watch him do live coding and see the different tricks that he's getting up to here. But we need to do two things really importantly. We need to squash everything down and get our frameworks and libraries down to a point where they're optimized for mobile. The same with our own code, the same with the data, et cetera. But the flip side is we also need to take and be able to take a slice of our information, of our UI, our UX, and be able to quickly deliver just that slice and then be able to lazily load things later. It's really important for us to be able to do this, and we need to do it in a way that actually makes sense for us. So again, back at Walmart, we did a lot of what's now called isomorphic JavaScript, server-side rendering, but it became a little bit of a spaghetti mess. If you went into the code, you'd see some little cheeky hacks of like, if I'm on the server, actually do this, and if I'm on the client and do this, and it was really painful. So we need to have the ability to do less work and do work later for our devices, but we also need to be able to do that as developers. And for that, we need to have all of the right tools to give us the abstractions where we can kind of you know, fake this out and let the illusion actually happen. So this is why I'm really excited about being here at the Polymer Summit, because I feel like Polymer's got the right match here. It's a great tool to allow us to actually deliver this experience. And I'm super excited for you to you know, see what else comes up later on in the day. And now I kind of want to get off stage and allow you to kind of see what's going on in the world of tooling, because I think it's going to really impress you and show you what's going to be possible as you meet that challenge. Thanks so much. Thank you.